The other side of the world on the harsh west coast of New Zealand's South Island, a team of five scientists are on a mission to hunt for gold. To extract any gold from this wild, primeval terrain, they'll have to solve a series of science challenges. Their base camp is an old sawmill where they've got simple tools and basic bits. Ingenuity, they'll have to supply themselves. Our scientists are... Mike Bullivant, our creative chemist. He's also a stand-up comedian and a keen outdoors man. Kathy Sykes, an irrepressible physicist and extreme sports fanatic. Mike Lee, he's a biologist with attitude. He's also a car mechanic and martial arts expert. Ellen McCauley's an intrepid botanist from Missouri, whose second home is the Amazon jungle. Jonathan Hare's a physicist with a science brain and an artist's eye, a true Renaissance man. And me, Kate Humble, the odd job girl. Together, we are Rough Science. We've travelled 12,000 miles to New Zealand's South Island. Our base is on the gold-rich West Coast. In this remote wilderness, the team face their ultimate challenge. Before the series ends, they must find enough gold to make a pure gold souvenir. Last time, the scientists scrabbled around in a river and found just enough flakes of gold to weigh on their homemade balance. Now, the quest continues. Right, challenges. <laughs> Last week, you managed to gather a whole half gram of gold. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous achievement. Now, as you know, that by the end of the series, you need to make a, something completely from New Zealand gold. So um, I think the uh, quest to find more should step up a pace. <laughs> so Jonathan, Mike and Kathy, what we want you to do is to make a water-powered machine to extract more gold from the river. Day and night. Keep day it night. going. Well, day up and night. to you. I think day and night's asking <laughs> a bit much. Now, Ellen, uh, something that we all should be aware of is that there is a massive fault line that runs, well, pretty much through Mike Leahy, in fact. <laughs> They've had some really, really big earthquakes around here. We want you to, you to use your botanical skills to establish when the last big earthquake was down to the year. OK, what's my other choice? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And finally, Mike B, if you could save us in the beauty department. Uh, as we know, <laughs> working outside, it's very cold, it's often very wet. These guys are going to be doing a lot of physical work over the next three days. They're going to get very chapped, very sore hands. So some hand cream, please. My darling. It's not a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll adapt. You have three days, as normal. As well as the gear in the sawmill, there's also the surprise kit that might give the scientists inspiration for this week's challenges. I'll leave you to rummage. <laughs> Big clue there. <laughs> so the challenges are an automated gold panning machine. That's going to be really useful. The date of the last big earthquake. Oh, really? Ooh. Ooh. Tennis ball. <laughs> and some hand cream, please, guys. There is some weirdness in here. <laughs> what sort of plants are going to help our botanists discover anything about earthquakes? Firstly, Ellen wants to look at the lay of the land, and with over 200,000 hectares to cover and only three days, Ellen wants a bird's eye view. OK, what do we need to do? Find some trees. Uh, found some. Some particular trees. Okay. <laughs> the gold hunters are making the most of Mike's experience. Last week, he was at the river making a sluice box to get gold out of sand and gravel. He and Ellen used some fibrous wood from the local tree ferns called punga to line the sluice. Pour on the sand, shake the material, wash it down with plenty of water, and because gold is heavy, it sinks, getting trapped in the punga fibres. The lighter materials get washed away. This week, instead of doing it by hand, they've got to build a machine to do the work for them. We've got a sluice box, which is a way of getting the gold out from the rest of the rubbish. We need to dig up the dirt right. and put it on whatever sluice box we've got. Somehow we've got to shake the sluice box or rattle the stones. And then thirdly, we've got to supply water. So there are the three things we've got to address, really. Ellen's taking me over one of New Zealand's most seismically active areas. Big earthquakes here are rare, but when they happen, they cause massive landslides. Ellen thinks this floodplain is where one of these landslides may have flattened everything hundreds of years ago. But when exactly? 
Ellen says the secret's in the trees. We're looking for trees that have grown back since the last earthquake. So we're looking for old trees that basically recolonized that area that was destroyed. Ellen's on the lookout for an unusual forest, a group of trees that all look the same height, that all grew back at the same time after the last earthquake. OK, so once you've established the age of those trees, you can basically establish when that last earthquake was, because there would have been nothing left after the earthquake. Exactly. I got it. Because I thought you got mad this morning. How are you going to tell how, when Trust the last earthquake me. was? <laughs> This is the forest Ellen's chosen. She's hoping all these trees started life after the last earthquake. But trees don't all grow back in the same year. Ellen needs to find the first tree that grew back. That'll give her the date closest to the earthquake, so she's on the hunt for the oldest tree. Wow. This is a metai. This is the biggest tree we've found so far. Yeah. If you want the most accurate date yeah. on when that last earthquake is, we got to core it. OK. And you're just going to do this with brute force? Got to be strong to be a botanist. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell the age of a tree by counting its annual rings. But because these trees are so old and valuable, we're letting Ellen use a tree corer. It's the only way to get at the rings without killing the tree. The core is made of high tensile steel, impossible for Ellen to make in only three days. I think I'm going to have a very hard day. In the hand cream lab, Mike's boiling wool from the kit. Wool that's straight sheared off a sheep contains lanolin, which is the natural grease that the sheep secretes. It waterproofs the sheep, essentially, which is why sheep don't shrink in the rain. But first of all, it forms a protective greasy layer, so it helps to retain water. But it does more than that. It has this marvellous property of helping water be reabsorbed back into the skin. It's a, it's a waxy substance with a low melting temperature, and that's why I'm boiling it up in this pan, because the hot water will melt the waxy substance, and it'll float on the top of the water. And when the water cools down, I hope we're going to get this layer of, of grease or wax. That, I think, is going to be the basis for my hand cream. It's looking promising for the gold prospectors. They're making a water-powered panning machine. This is going to look wicked. Yeah, I think so. Ellen and I are going back in tree history. Okay, we may have to do this in parts. OK. Okay, look at that. This. We're going back, I mean, we're going back 50, 100, several hundred years right here. Isn't that beautiful? That's incredible. <gasps> okay, so you want to put this in oh. the... <gasps> it's gone longer than the actual... Look at that. Isn't that great? Okay. Okay. Smell it, do you smell it, do you smell it? Oh, it's, it's that, that first cut <gasps> wood smell. Dang, we just lost a little bit. So basically, every summer that this tree has been alive, it creates a ring. Mm-hmm. That's so clever. Yeah, this is the part we lost. Well, we didn't lose much at all. 25, 50 years? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> We've got one tree core, but being a thorough scientist, Ellen wants to see if there's an older tree lurking deeper in the forest. So I've left her to carry on coring. Wow, look at this. You guys yeah, have been working nice, hard, yes. Yeah, it's been a hard day. Both me and Kathy really going for it. Well, it looks very beautiful, but I have no idea what it is, of course. Well, remember the sluice box? Yeah. This is sort of... A compact, automatic sluice box, if you like. So how are you going to power it? Well, follow me. <laughs> this... You guys are so sneaky. This is how we're going to get it to work. This is what Jonathan's been working on. <laughs> this has got Jonathan written all over it, it has, it has to be has said. It, yeah. Beautifully cut Jonathan out circles. Machine. Yeah. OK. A water wheel. A water wheel, yeah. So hopefully the stream's going to be coming from your side across yeah. here. Yeah. You hit the bottom of the paddles, yeah. which will move it round. So as this turns, the energy from this will rock their box. See, the icing on the cake would be if we could run a pump off this. 
Somehow, this spinning water wheel must power a pump and rock the sluice box if it's ever going to get the gold out of river gravel. How's Mike B doing? Are you making soup? Yeah, lamb's small soup. <laughs> <laughs> it looks absolutely disgusting. Well, all the lamb's wool in the case this morning yeah. was in there. I just boiled it all up. And I started filtering it, but it was far too slow. Right. So what I've decided to do is just transfer all of the hot water here containing the lanolin into this bowl yeah. and reduce that down, drive the water off, oh, and then okay. filter the reduced liquid through here. There's always so much smoke around you. Well, chemists need heat, you know. <laughs> so will you get a lovely sort of thick hand creamy mush? Is that the, th is that the theory? Mm, well, that's the theory, but I'm going to have to spend some time tomorrow clear clarifying it and purifying it a bit. But I'll need Ellen to get some, some uh, natural oils or something from up there. A good plan, To yeah. make this smell fairly pleasant, because at the moment... Yeah, <laughs> we will all be good. smelling of sheep. Yeah. It's another fine frosty morning for the beginning of day two, although worryingly there are some clouds creeping in, so mm, that rain could come back. But in the meantime, trees are being cored in a forest not too far away from here. There's steaming wool and lanolin hopefully is coming out of it. And Mike and Jonathan are doing, well, I don't know quite what, with lots of bits of plywood and tennis balls. They're making some sort of water pump. <laughs> See this tennis ball, as you pull it up, any yeah. weight of the water on top should spread it out so it really clings very hard, you know, it forms a good seal with this tube. So it should pump water up this tube. So is the idea to keep water pumping into your device rather than you having to keep carrying buckets? Yeah. That's is the that... idea, yeah. And this will be powered oh, by the water mill as well. So this will just go like this. What sort of stuff do you need doing? Well, we've got to rig up the link, haven't we, somehow, between the... We still haven't linked the water wheel to the cradle. Yeah. I mean, that is your biggest challenge, really. Definitely. Yeah. And given that you've got to find gold, rather than mm. be worrying about linking the water wheel, maybe you ought to crack on with that. Mm, maybe. Ellen's stepping up her search for the oldest tree. Oh. Now, so she's roped Cathy in for some tree-hugging help. Yep, too small. Hey! I think we need to check with the string. This one's big. It's big. OK, hey. so there's the knot. That's so look, it's a bigger tree. Definitely bigger. Let's core it. Put your finger in there, scrape some stuff off the side, and just rub it on your arm. Oh, yeah. And I think that's what we're going to end up with. But then I have to take that yeah. and purify it. But lanolin looks pretty scummy anyway. Is it? Yeah, it's not like candle wax. It's not oh, clear. Okay. Yeah. Are you sure you're not lying to me just so I don't get disappointed well, you've, tomorrow? <laughs> you've had so many <laughs> promising tales from me, haven't you? <laughs> I have five grams of gold. Uh. <laughs> OK, I'm optimistic. That's my positive throw on life, you know. Mike's optimism must be infectious. Things are looking up in the water wheel camp. This is amazing. It's like a kind of Willy Wonka gold extractor, isn't it? <laughs> now, talk me through the process. How's it going to work? OK, well, this, this would be in the stream. Yeah. And the stream's coming this way. Yeah. So that's going to make this paddle go round like this. I don't know about this fast, but yeah. it's going to make it go round. OK. And at the other end of the axle there, we've got a pulley, yeah. which is driving Mike's wonderful little pump. Yeah. So that hopefully is sucking up water, okay. which we'll take to the uh, sluice box. Yeah. And this end, we've got uh, another pulley. So and that takes rocks it the sluice rocks box. It. And it does rock it beautifully. Yeah. And so this is the business end. It's then. the business end, yeah. We've right. got the water coming down this pipe from that little pump. Yep. And that will be jetted onto dirt here, paying right. dirt, rocks and things. Yeah. The finer dirt will go on this splashboard. Yeah. Will come down into this removable drawer. Yeah. Where there are riffles to catch the gold. Yeah. From then it drips down onto this plate where more gold will be caught. And finally the water and all the larger piece of gravel and waste go out of the end here. It's a one-man machine. You just shovel the stuff on, it'll do everything for you. It's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I wonder which bit will float down the river first. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. You. <laughs> At long last, Operation Waterwheel can begin its mission to get gold. Time for that. They're relying on it because their ultimate challenge is to find enough gold to make a souvenir by the end of the series. Extracting the corers from the trees is proving even harder than putting them in. <laughs> what did you do today, Kathy? <laughs> I, I had trees. <laughs> OK, hold on, I need a better grip. Wait until we get that hand cream. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need it, darling. <laughs> oh, oh I, I, 
I don't think Ellen's going to want to put that on her. Or even Mike Leahy. Kathy's back with the Gold Hunters. Now, the hard graft of the last two days is really going to be put to the test. Somehow, their machine has to process sand and gravel from the riverbank to get gold. You guys are flogging dead horse, you know, because we're up against one big problem here, and it isn't our fault. It's inappropriate technology, because the faster current's on the outside of the bend, yeah. the gold's deposited on the inside of the bend. Yeah. <laughs> So it's upriver to find the right bit of water. That's going. It's just it's a bit of force there. Just, it wants to be five times faster than that, doesn't it? Yeah. This is about the best we found so far. As you can see, there's enough to turn it, and we're hoping there'll be enough to rock the, uh, the cradle. But it's rocking, it. Yeah. It is rocking. Yeah. Hey, guys, that's some <laughs> success. It is rocking. Um, it's a bit slow. It's going to have to be a lot faster. But it's nice that it's actually working. Right? It, I think it's a miracle that it's actually working. It's amazing. Well, the gold's in the wrong place, isn't it? If the gold was over on the fast bit of the river, we'd be all right. <laughs> How fast does it have to go? Well, sure uh, to, to be honest, the fa I think the faster... You know you were talking last night about maybe vibrating... You know, if it went really fast, would that be OK? Yeah. Because you were worried that your wheel better. might go too fast for us, if I remember right. You! <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me they won't be laughing quite as much tomorrow. It's nearly the end of day two, and they haven't even started sorting gravel. Yeah. Mike B has cooked all of this to make this, which he's filtering here. Still no hand cream. At least Ellen's found just the thing to improve the lanolin smell, some local tea tree. That's plenty. The end of another long day of science, sun and sheep's wool. In the cabin, the team's chatting about some strange rumblings they'd heard at the river. While we were there, we were just minding our own business. These two were in the stream, Kathy and Jonathan, and we heard, like, this rumble of thunder. And I thought, crikey, what's that? And I thought they dropped the wheel or whatever. But no, it was a dirty great landslip. We didn't see it. It was just like that low, <sighs> or an avalanche, that kind of noise. It doesn't take long before they're on to Ricky the chef to get some answers about the local earthquakes. How often do they happen? Yeah. Um, they've become quite regular. They've become quite regular? Yeah. Like once a month, once a week, once a day? Yeah. Yeah. No, you can't take that. It's not once a day. It's probably the last one would have been only a matter of three to, three to four weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So I was in Indonesia in Timor, oh. and I was in bed, and all of a sudden I woke up, and I felt a wave, and it just kept waving, and I thought, wow, the Earth is alive. I mean, it was the most exciting experience I had ever had, that, you know, the Earth is alive, it's moving, and it was just very calm, so I just let the Earth rock me back to sleep. of day three, and the water-powered gold machine is up and running. Finally! They had to move it because the river dropped again overnight, so uh, they had to build another kind of channel to direct the water fast through it. The boys are digging furiously, and Kathy and I are just going through this hopefully gold-laden sand to extract as much as possible by the end of the day. I think the day's going to go very fast indeed. Sadly, the water wheel wasn't fast enough to power Mike's pump, so Kathy's being the pump. The water filters all the small particles onto the trays where hopefully the gold will be trapped in the fibres of the punga wood. If any really fine gold escapes that, it should get caught in this sacking. <laughs> Ellen's taking a break from her earthquake puzzle. Some gold is still stuck in the punga wood from last week's small-scale gold operation. She's burnt the wood, and now she's panning the ashes to recover the gold. Hey, Mike, what do you want to make out of all this gold we're getting? I think some item of jewellery. That'd be nice. Well, I'll mean? work on getting us some more. Well, we can make you a crown. <laughs> Princess Leia. Load of gold. I don't really wear much gold. Um, flog it and buy something really nice. I'd make a nice cheap ring for my fiance. I mean, it'd save me a lot of money, wouldn't it? And it'd be personal and very romantic, if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs>
To make anything, they're going to need much more than last week's half a gram. How's it looking? There's a lot of gold in there. Is there? Yeah. Prove it to me. <laughs> okay, just a second, just a second. Oh, 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 look, look, look. That's all that. Oh, oh that's yes. gold. See? Yeah. Brilliant. I guess 15 more minutes? Okay, fine. And then should we get on with the tree rings? Yeah. All right, well, I'll leave you in peace. And um, when you've got it separate. <laughs> You're going to leave me wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's relying on chemistry to trap the lanolin in some vegetable oil. What I'm trying to do is purify the lanolin, which has got sheep sweat in it. It's got all kinds of uh, dirt from the war. Now, lanolin is, is a wax, so it should dissolve in the oil layer, whereas I hope the other impurities that I want to get rid of are going to dissolve in the water. We'll see. There we are. We'll give it a shake. And then we'll just put it over here and warm it up to help it on its way. We're counting tree rings. We've got a very important date to find. 72, 71, 70, 69, 68. That is the year I was born. <laughs> Give me this. <laughs> well, the automated panning system is rocking and rolling. The more gravel they feed into the machine, the more gold they'll get. And what you can see here is the... Uh, the oil floating, the vegetable oil floating on the top. We've got the water on the bottom, which has taken out all of the coloration from the lanolin. And in the middle there is a layer of lanolin. But to prove that that's lanolin, or to indicate that it's lanolin, I've done a control where I've just shaken up a similar amount of water with a similar amount of vegetable oil. And you can see the difference between the two. But this worked first time. I really cock a hoop about that. That's, a, that's amazing. Now, my only problem now is to separate that off. It turns out that finding the earthquake date isn't as simple as just counting tree rings. There's a confounding factor. There are even more years. It takes a tree a certain amount of time to even get to that height uh, okay. where we were coring. OK. So we're going to have to add about 28 years. 28 years? Mm -hmm. So that's an educated guess. That's because it sounds like quite a specific number. Tree scientists have figured out that's a reasonable number to add. OK. <laughs> It's nearly the end of day three, and if there's gold in the sluice, there isn't enough time to get it all out. So Kathy and Jonathan are panning as much as they can from the sand trapped in the sacking. Any gold in the punga wood will have to be recovered as part of next week's challenge. All I do is very carefully and I pour off that top layer containing the lanolin. Try not getting too much of the lower water layer in it. Well, there's our lanolin. That's not looking too, too unlike something you'd buy in a pharmacist, is it? <laughs> he said. <laughs> well, it's nearly time to test it out. Will our skin survive the potion? Has Ellen solved her earthquake mystery? And is there gold to add to our collection? Well, chaps, the quest for gold this week took a turn for the better. In fact, several turns, because we did have the most magnificent water wheel, which powered a fantastic cradle and got this much gold. And we also got the gold out of the punga. So you've got two lots of gold. Cathy, if you would do the honours with that and weigh that. Now, in the meantime, we had Ellen with her tree cores. What did you come up with? We took six cores, mm -hmm. and they were all about the same age, give or take 20 years. Yeah. But the oldest core was 277 years old. OK. So I would say that the last major earthquake occurred in 1725. OK. Well, let's see what the University of Lincoln in Christchurch have to say about that. Hold on. 1725, you say. University of Lincoln says. 1717! <laughs> That's good! <laughs> Pretty close! Yeah! Pretty close! Hey, trees are the well answer. Done. That was amazing. Now, how are you guys coming along here? We're getting that. Are you getting that? Okay. There's now, we remember that last well. week's total... 0. 0.55 grams. 0. 0.55 grams. So, let's see what we can bring it up to this week. I think it's pretty close to 1.2 grams, guys. 1.2 grams. Yeah. So we yes. have a grand total of 1.7 grams of gold. And you know what your treat is for the end of the day? 
Mike's hot cream. Smiling. As perfected by Laboratoire Boulevard. Now, this is hand cream with essence of tea tree yeah. and just a little whiff of sheep's bum, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try it. On the inside of your wrist. I have to say, I am desperate oh. for this stuff now. Wow. It's really, so really sore. This, this is, really is nice. great. Well, guys, it was a really, really brilliant week. Congratulations to all of you. And uh, I think there's more gold to come out of the automotive machine, don't we think? Yeah, oh, there's yeah. more gold to come out of the Ponga. We haven't even dried yeah. the Ponga. Brilliant. So, so the quest continues. <laughs> well done, all of you. And <laughs> this is good. This is, is delicious. Gorgeous. <laughs> <Hooray! laughs> Join us for more Rough Science next time. <laughs> Rough Science continues at PBS Online. Point your browser to pbs.org. Funding for this program is provided by Subaru. Just you, a mountain, and all-wheel drive. You don't have to be a scientist to figure this one out. Subaru, proud and logical sponsor of Rough Science.